Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Skill Shetra. I'm Kushal and this is episode 3 of our Hacker 101 CTF walkthrough series. Today, we're diving into the Micro CMS V2 challenge. It might sound simple at first, but trust me, it's a puzzle packed with hidden vulnerabilities that'll keep you on your toes. From web app exploits to clever little tricks, we're going to break it all down step by step. If you are ready to level up your CTF game and learn some solid techniques along the way, you're in the right place. And of course, if you find this walkthrough helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more CTF breakdowns in the future. Alright, let's jump into it and solve this challenge together. This challenge has three flags and the difficulty is marked as moderate. If you get stuck at any point, you can always check the hint provided for a little nudge. Let's begin. Once we start the challenge, it takes a little time for the instance to load. So we wait for it to be ready. After the app is up and running, we notice that it looks very similar to a previous challenge. It appears to be a blog content management system with two visible blog posts and a button that allows you to create a new page. However, when we try to either create or edit a page, we're redirected to a login page. This indicates that those actions are restricted to admin users. Now, if we try entering a random username and password, we get an error message that says unknown user. This hints that the input might be vulnerable to SQL injection. To test this, we enter a single quote in the username or password field and submit the form. As expected, we get an internal server error indicating that the backend might be improperly handling the input. This confirms it's a blind SQL injection vulnerability because the server crashes without returning specific SQL error details. Let's now think about the kind of query the backend might be using to validate login credentials. A common pattern would be something like select all from admins where username equals username entered and password equals password entered. Given the hint in the challenge, getting admin access might require a more perfect union. We can suspect that a union-based SQL injection might work here. So after a few attempts, I crafted a payload using the union select technique. Here's the logic. First, we provide a value for the username that ends the initial query and adds a second select statement using union. In simple terms, the query becomes something like this. Select all from admins where username equals apostrophe. Union select pass is password from admins where one equals one and password equals pass. What this does is the first condition with the empty username fails. The union select clause retrieves the value pass from the admins table where the condition is always true. The password is then compared to the string pass, which we know is true. So the login should succeed. So to put this into action in the username field, we enter apostrophe union select pass as password from admins where one equals one. And in the password field, we enter pass. After submitting this, we are successfully logged in as an admin. Now, if we go back to the home page, we see a new page titled private page. When we visit the private page, we find our first flag, copy and save that flag. We'll need it to complete the challenge. Moving on, finding the second flag. If we see hints, we can see three. First, what actions could you perform as a regular user on the last level, which you can't now. This prompts us to think about functionality changes based on authentication. Second, just because a request fails with one method doesn't mean it will fail with a different method. This is a strong nudge toward experimenting with different HTTP methods, especially switching between GET and POST. And the third different requests often have different required authorization. This implies that authorization might be enforced inconsistently across request types. When logged in as an admin, we previously had the ability to edit blog posts. Now, as an anonymous user, we no longer have access to that feature. Clicking edit redirects us straight to the login page. This behavior aligns with the first hint. We've lost some capabilities we once had as a logged in user. Let's capture the request when we try to edit a blog post while logged out. Using burp suite, we intercept the request. As expected, the server responds with a 302 found, redirecting us to the login page. This is normal behavior for unauthenticated access. Now let's take this intercepted request and send it to repeater. In repeater, we first send the original get request again. We follow the redirection and land on the login page. No surprise there. Now let's apply the second hint. Instead of sending a get request, we change the method to post. We hit send and here's where the magic happens. With the post request, the server responds with a 200 OK. And within the response, we find the second flag. She, this confirms that the authorization logic is flawed. The application checks for authentication on the get request to the edit page, but not on the post request that performs the actual edit. This kind of vulnerability where post actions are not properly protected is common in misconfigured applications and can be exploited to gain unauthorized access or actions. All right, now let's finish this off with the third and final flag. The hint says, credentials are secret, flags are secret. Coincidence? That clearly suggests that this flag is hidden behind a login screen and we'll need valid credentials to 
access it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use Burp Suites Intruder to brute force the login, starting with the username. First, I tried logging in with some random usernames and passwords just to observe the error messages. When the username doesn't exist, it says invalid username. But when the username exists and the password is wrong, it says invalid password. That difference tells us we can use this behavior to discover a valid username. Now I intercept the login request in Burp and send it to Intruder. In the username field, I inject a payload like single, quote, OR, username like, then temp percent. The password can be anything because we're not injecting into that field. What this does is it allows us to test if any usernames start with temp. Then I URL encode the payload and highlight the part I want to brute force, in this case, temp. In Intruder's payload settings, I use the brute forcer option and set the minimum and maximum length to one character. That way, we're testing one character at a time from the alphabet and numbers. I run the attack and monitor the response length. Most of them are the same, but one of them stands out with a different length. That tells us the character we guessed is correct. For me, the first correct character was N, so I updated the payload to N% percent and ran the next round. By repeating this process, I eventually discovered that the valid username was Nicolette. To confirm, I tried logging in with the username Nicolette and random password. The response said invalid password, which confirms the username is real. Now time to find the password. This time I set the username field to just Nicolette and use a similar injection in the username field. Single quote or password like T% for example. I again URL encode the input, highlight the part I want to brute force and repeat the same one character brute force with intruder. Just like before, I monitor the response links and look for the outlier. That's the correct character. Piece by piece, I build the password. Once I had the full username and password, I logged in successfully. And boom, there it was. The third and final flag. And that's it. Micro CMS v2. Fully solved. All three flags captured. If you followed along, you now know how to use error-based enumeration and smart brute forcing to crack credentials and access protected content. I have also linked a Python script in description to solve this challenge if you want to automate this attack. Thanks for sticking around till the end. If you learned something or enjoyed the video, Make sure to like it, drop a comment and subscribe for more walkthroughs. I'll see you in the next one.